Good morning. Welcome back to the Old Shed Workshop. If this is your first time here, I'll invite you to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications for future videos. Those subscriptions really help me to build my channel. I'm about to start on my latest project, which is two swivel glider Adirondack chairs. These chairs will be made out of northern red cedar, which came from my yard. The trees were cut down and milled locally. The wood has been sitting outside, covered, drying for approximately two years. I had originally made an Adirondack chair from the same cedar. So this is part of the stockpile of what is left. I have some pieces cut to a little bit longer than finished lengths. I like to try to cut pieces to an easily workable length. I'll show you what the wood looks like now. Since I have them cut to workable lengths, then I'll be moving on to planing them. At that point, I'll be able to show you the beautiful colors of the heartwood that's hidden inside this wood that's been sitting drying. This will give you an idea of the color of the wood before it's been planed. This is the color that it turns when it's exposed to the air, even though it's been a drying process. This is the color. I'm ready to start putting some pieces through the planer. This is the color of the northern red cedar after it's been planed. This wood, the heartwood, goes anywhere from this very light, almost white color to a very deep purple. Absolutely beautiful. The best part is my shop smells awesome right now. When I start cutting the pieces to uh, their finished lengths, it'll smell terrific in here. The next step will be cutting a straight edge on one edge. I have a few pieces left over from when I built the Adirondack chair. There were a couple of things that I had to buy that I couldn't get out of my milled uh, northern red cedar from my property. Uh, I had a couple of pieces left over that I'm able to get all the feet from one chair out of these leftover pieces. I'm going to rough cut these pieces. They'll be cut to finish size with a pattern cutting bit on the router table. Let me cut these out. Here's the first eight feet cut out of uh, leftover cedar. That's enough to do one chair. I'm back in the shop this afternoon. Mother Nature threw me a curveball yesterday in that we had no electricity here. I took the time, since I couldn't use the table saw or the bandsaw, to mark out the side supports for the two chairs and some of the bottom carcass that uh, supports the chair. So today I'm going to cut those out. All the pieces here where you see the beautiful purple heartwood, those are all the pieces that will form the chair's seat and back. I have my jig set up to show you how I put a straight edge on a board that doesn't have a straight edge. Let me run this through. I have a straight edge that I can put against the fence to cut all the slats for the seat in the back. I have my dado set all set up 
in the table saw ready to go. And I need to cut a rabbit in uh, part of the carcass for the bottom of the chair. How that comes together, you'll see as I put the chair together. So one thing I wanted to mention is that you never run your piece against the fence because you have opposing forces. You got to force this way. You got to force this way. And that's a recipe for disaster. You don't need anything to bind and kick back and cause you a serious injury. So what you do is you use a, a block with a fence clamp. You set it up near your dado and you do your measurements off the block. Once you have your measurements and your fence is set, you take the block back. This is so that as you push your workpiece through, you have your distance from the edge of the dado to the stop block. As your workpiece comes forward, you don't have anything touching the fence. You don't have any risk of kickback. So I'm gonna run a couple of these dados for part of the carcass. I have all the dados cut. Now let's see how the piece fits into the dado. Nice tight fit. I only need two of these pieces that I cut the dados in for each chair. If you recall, I'm making two chairs. Earlier, I said I was going to put a straight edge on a board that did not have a straight edge. I've done all of these. Now they can be run against my fence on my table saw to cut all the slats for the seat and the back. These pieces are all part of the carcass. And these pieces are the arms and part of the, the sides in the seat. I have my table saw set up now to rip all the slats that are going to comprise the seats and the backs of the chairs. You can see now how with the straight edge that I put on all these boards, I'm able to run them against the fence. <laughs> These are the bases for the two chairs, pretty much the foundation of the whole chair. Just wanted to get a chance to show you. I'm going to get them into finish. You can see the color of this wood. This came out of the trees that came down from my property. The two by four cedar, I had to buy at a uh, lumber yard. This is where the glider hardware will go. This one's upside down. You can see how nice those dados came out. I wanted to leave this one upside down so you can see how the swivel portion of the chair mounts. I'm ready to start trimming pieces to their finished dimensions. To that end, I'm using double face tape and taking a template with the double face tape of fixing the template to the piece and then running it on the router table to get the piece to its final dimension. The bit I'm using for this is from Whiteside. Whiteside makes a very high quality bit and this one is an upcut spiral bit. The difference between an upcut spiral bit and a downcut spiral bit is that a downcut bit 
pushes the material away from the router base, whereas an upcut spiral bit pulls the material towards the router base, or in this case, pulls the material towards the router table. I'm at the router table now. You can see that I have my remote control that operates both the router and the dual stage dust collection system. I'm about to start trimming a piece which will eventually be one of the arms of one of the chairs. I'll put a link up above to the video I did where I made the fence for the router table with the uh, dust collection port uh, integral to the fence. You want to be very careful using a bit like this. The bit is very unforgiving and trimming a wood like cedar uh, which has a tendency to splinter can be difficult. Although I showed the two-faced tape with one of the feet, I did not trim those on the router table. I did those on an oscillating sander. Those are all end grain and the uh, cedar tends to chip out on the end grain fairly easily. I'll also put a link up above to the two-stage dust collection system that I built for my small shop. Just finishing up the end of the piece. You see how convenient it is to have the remote control for the router and the dust collection system. Now I'll pop off the template with a thin putty knife and on to the next one. These are all the slats that are going to form the seat in the back of the two chairs. These are the side supports which will go from the top of the glider hardware up to support the arms. Over here, you can see the beautiful color of the heartwood before it has finish on it. The feet came out of a cedar 2x4 that I had to buy at a lumber yard. If you look at the photo up above, you'll see that there's a natural sheen that develops on cedar as it sits in a lumber yard. You have to sand the sheen off and get down to the raw wood. These pieces are in finish. You can see how the color changes in the heartwood once you get finish on it. So the next thing is to do a round over on the edges of all the feet and then get them and the arms all in finish. I'm ready to start cutting the slats that will become the seat in the back of the two chairs. I have my extension for my table saw crosscut sled installed. I have the stop block set up to my finished length. Now I'm going to begin to square off one edge and then extend the piece out to the stop block to cut the pieces to their finished length. I'm ready to begin assembling the lower portion of both chairs. I have my stainless steel enclosed swivel ready to be mounted. The first four feet are mounted to the swivel. So I'm going to loosely attach these and then this will be affixed to the base. I'll be able to make adjustments after I get it mounted to the base.
Everything is stainless. All the bolts, all the washers, all the screws in a different part of the chair will all be stainless. So the first four, as I mentioned, go to the swivel. The next four will be mounted to the base plate. I'm ready to mount the swivel with the first four feet to the base of the chair. I'm using inch and a half stainless steel lag bolts for this. I used inch and a quarter to go into the top of the foot. The foot will have four bolts in it, whereas the, uh, the swivel plate going to the base will only have four, so I'm using a larger lag. Then I'll be able to flip it over and make whatever adjustments I need to make to the first four feet. Now I'll make some minor adjustments to the positioning of the feet in relation to the swivel. Then I'll add the base plate and the other four feet. As you can see now, I have the remaining four feet attached using the base plate. So now it comes together. You can see the first four were attached to the swivel. And then the second four get attached to the base plate. And now you can see how it moves freely. And again, that swivel is stainless steel and it's sealed to the weather. I'm back at the router table. I have my round over bit already mounted in the table. I have my dust collection all set up, ready to go. I'm just going to put my ear protection on and start rounding over the edges of all the pieces that'll form the seat in the back of both chairs. When we left off, I was at the router table rounding over all the edges of all the slats that'll make up the seats and the backs for both chairs. Through the magic of video editing and time, it's actually a couple of days later, all the slats have now been finished sanded and I'm ready to begin finish. I'm ready to start assembly of the upper portion of the two chairs. These are the pieces that I'll be using. You can see here that I have clamped up one of the bottom pieces. All the slats for the seat will go on that piece. And then the vertical piece is the side for the back of the chair. I have my stainless steel carriage bolts and washers out and I'm ready to begin assembly. I have a piece of scrap wood clamped to the back of the vertical part of the chair. Always a good idea to put a piece of scrap on the other side of the workpiece you want to save so that you don't get tear out when you drill the hole. The next part of the assembly is to attach the side supports 
to the main structure of the top of the chair. Along the top here will be the arm of the chair. So I have all my measurements. Everything's laid out and clamped in place. I have uh, hex head bolts here because my carriage bolts haven't come in yet. These are the two places where the hex head bolts are that the glider hardware will hang from to connect the top of the chair to the bottom of the chair. So these will be swapped out for carriage bolts. Now I have to drill some holes and bolt it up. I have side one of chair one all bolted in place. Most important thing was to be able to keep these two pieces flat because that's where the arm of the chair is going to go. Okay, now on to side two. I have the side supports on both sides all bolted up. The arms aren't secured in place. It's just to show you what it's going to look like once the arms are secured in place. Starting to look like a chair now. I want to try to give you a short video on the base of one of the chairs. It's in bright sunlight, so I apologize if there's some shadowing. This is the base. At this point, the whole base is uh, attached to the swivel and the base plate. You can see that everything swivels nicely. I have the glider hardware on and I'm getting ready to mount the second chair to this base. Here's the first chair completed. Pretty exciting for me, I'm not gonna lie. This was a long project making these two chairs. A lot of work, a lot of steps, but really came out nice. Well, the chairs are finally done. I just want to give you the opportunity to get a close-up look on this beautiful wood. Remember this cedar came from trees right on my property. They were cut down by a local company and then milled locally as well. You can see the beautiful colors. Give you a close up on the other one as well so you can see all the colors. Here's my lovely shop assistant, Pam, demonstrating the chair. You can see how nice it glides. And if the conversation turns in this direction, you could just swivel the chair. They came out really good. I'm pretty proud of these. Well, the chairs are all done. I'd like to thank you all for staying with me through this whole project. It was a fun project. I'd also would like to invite you to like and subscribe. All you folks that subscribe help me to build my channel. And I'll also invite you to visit my website, oldshedworkshop.com. We'll see you on the next one.